thank you for coming to my presentation. In this presentation, I will be talking about the development of GNU radio blocks for spectrum sensing uh, using the autocorrelation of samples. Uh, the content of the speech is, uh, I will talk very briefly about the, some spectrum sensing methods, uh, and then I will present the, the methods that we have implemented in GNU radio blocks. These are some common spectrum sensing methods. Remember that spectrum sensing is basically a, a, a task performed by community radios to determine if there is a primary user or not, so the channel can be used by a secondary user. So this has, these are some methods. Uh, we have the, the simplest one is the energy detector. We have also the mass filter. We have the, the cyclostationary detector, and we have the autocorrelation. And I picked the autocorrelation because that uh, method doesn't need to know the noise level of the environment. And the energy detector needs to know that in order to distinguish between a, a primary user or absence of primary user. So the autocorrelation of a noise is a very different from autocorrelation of signals. So as we can see here in, the, in this uh, graph, this uh, uh, black curve is the autocorrelation uh, when we have only noise. And as the signal to noise ratio of signals increase, the autocorrelation approaches this line. Yes, this, this line is the, like the limit that the autocorrelation can reach. So based on that, uh, the first method, what I had called uh, the uh, Euclidean distance method, uh, measures the distance between the, between the correlation, autocorrelation, and the reference line. This reference line is just the, the limit. So the autocorrelation can go further than that. So uh, what it does is use calculate the distance, Euclidean distance, and based on the value, will say, decide there is a signal or not. Um, this is the, all you know, this is the, the formula, formula for the Euclidean distance. So the, uh, this, block, this is the block diagram for this method the, that was implemented in, in GNU Radio. So it takes the samples, calculate the autocorrelation, then the Euclidean distance, and there is a, obviously the reference line is entered into this block to calculate the distance. Then it does a normalization and makes a decision. That normalization is done so the distance will be between zero and one. And here we introduce the threshold and make the decision and write the, the result to a file along with information such as the location or could be the coordinates, longitude and latitude, and uh, could be the, uh, also the frequency, the, frequency uh, the time, the date. So you can get data for, for further analysis to study the uses, the uses pattern of the channels. Uh, this is the block. So uh, here we can, you can enter the different parameters like the threshold, the frequency, and the location. This is, the, this is my town where I come from in Colombia. Uh, this is the folder where you can, where you can store the, the results and the number of samples that you take. Uh, the next method uh, uses the K-means K -means clustering method. This is a method from machine learning. And it, this method consists in classifying uh, dots uh, depending on their similarity. So what it does is, you say, uh, at the beginning, picks K samples, or uh, we call it a, a centroids from the whole, the whole space, and then uh, builds the clusters, yes, uh, based on the uh, distance to the centroid. Then calculates the mean of the centroids, and then recalculate the clusters, and it, do, it does this process iteratively until the centroids don't move anymore. Yeah, so the centroids are basically the center of the clusters. 
So to implement that method with this, uh, what I did was uh, I, I, I needed to put the autocorrelation in a plane so I could have some dots. So I, what I did was uh, to calculate the variance and the mean of the autocorrelation and then build the clusters. So I have here a graph showing different clusters for different conditions. Yes, for example, this is a, a, a cluster for zero dBs, uh, signal to noise ratio for minus 10 dBs. And uh, this one is when there is no signal, or that means it's noise, only noise. And this is when we have 10 dBs of simple, uh, um, signal to noise ratio. This was done uh, through simulation. And this one it was uh, obtained through uh, real experiments taking uh, signals from the air, yes? So in this case, uh, we have two samples of noise that are here, in this part, and you have a, a narrow signal, yes? Like, for example, the signal that, can, uh, that come from a FM radio station, and we have a, also a white signal that we generated with a, a GNU radio flow graph and a HACRF, and also a 47, uh, 470 megahertz uh, signal that we took from the air. And this is a digital TV uh, channel in Colombia. So it's here in this part. So it's very close to, to the noise. So the, and this is the, um, the block, diagram, block diagram for this method. Uh, here we use a they take the samples, we calculate the autocorrelation, then the mean and the variance, and we do the cluster classification. Of course, we have to enter the centroids. Previously, you have to uh, obtain the centroids through experimentation. And then we have to tell the block which centroid corresponds to, the, to noise. So it can make a decision and can write the result to a file, along with the other data, such as the coordinates, the uh, location, and the time and date. And this is the, the block, how it looks like. Here, uh, we can enter the location, where you can enter the folder where you can store the data, the frequency, and these are the centroids. So you use, uh, before uh, running the, the block, or you have to, you need to know these centroids, so you don't have to do this every time. You just do it one time, and then you can use these this centroids for, for the, the next times. And here, you, you say, tell the system which is the noise label. So what is the, the, the cluster that contains the samples of noise? So you can decide based on which cluster the samples belong to if these samples are signal or are uh, noise. And of course, we, we can also tell the block how many samples you, can, you want to take. And this method is uh, based also in, uh, on a uh, machine learning method, the K nearest neighbor method. Yes. In the, this case, we ha this is a, a supervised uh, machine learning algorithm. The previous one was an unsupervised machine learning algorithm. And in this case, you have training samples with known labels. So in the, these training samples are basically, you say these samples are signals, uh, these samples are noise. So you can enter different types of signals with the labels, yes. And uh, so in a, a new sample, each time a new sample comes into a system, is given the most common label among its K nearest neighbors. So the K is something that you pick. In this example, for example, uh, here we have, uh, we have two labels, this uh, red triangle and the blue square, and we have a sample which is unknown, we don't know. So in this case, we have three neighbors, yes, and the most common label is the red tri triangle. Uh, therefore, this green cir uh, circle will be given the the red triangle label. And this is the, the, the block, diagram, block diagram for this method. Uh, we take the samples, calculate the autocorrelation, then the FFT, then we calculate the percentiles 
that 25%, 50%, 75% percentile, and we pass those, uh, these uh, numbers through uh, the KNN predictor, which has a pre-trained model, and then it, takes the, it the, makes the decision and writes it to a file. So why do we use this? So I will tell you. And this is the block here is, uh, we have the, I will tell you later why we are using this, uh, uh, percentiles. Um, this is the block uh, here, as in the previous ones, you can enter the location, uh, you can be, uh, use the, uh, the name of the town or you can use the coordinates, whatever you want. Here you can uh, tell the block the, where you want to store the data, uh, the frequency uh, where you are taking the sample, and this is the model, the pre-trained model. You can use in, in a file, you, you load, you have pre train the model, so someone else can do that before, yes, and you, someone else can share with you that model, and you can just uh, load it into the block and use it to make decisions. And we can also uh, tell the system uh, how many samples you want to take. And, and all these methods are common, the three methods I have exposed. I have presented to you, have in common this. This take the samples, they calculate the autocorrelation, they extract some features, and then uh, make a decision based on a pre-built model, and then they write to a file. And uh, in the case of the Euclidean distance method, it's very simple. It's just, you just compare with a threshold, and in the other case, the k-means and the k n and method, uh, the model is a little bit complex, but it's not too much complex. Um, and the difference, ob obviously, between the uh, Euclidean distance method and the other methods is that in the Euclidean distance method, there is no learning involved. It's just this comparison with, the, with, the, with, a, with a threshold. In the other method, we have some learning involved. Um, so um, now I'm going to explain why we are using the percentiles for the last method, the KNN method. Uh, sometimes it's, it's easy to extract the features. For example, when we have a, here we have a, a HACREF plus GNU radio signal. So we, uh, what we was used, we generated a, a narrow band signal, and we got the autocorrelation. So. Uh, in this case, this graph corresponds to signal, so it's, and this graph corresponds to noise. As you can see, it's very easy to distinguish between t these two conditions. Like in, in this, this was generated with this uh, flow graph, very simple flow graph. And this one was taken from the air. Uh, I made a mistake here. It's, this is what was taken from a radio station in 106.3 megahertz. Uh, it's a radio station in my town. So this, this is the autocorrelation of that radio station. And as you can see, it's very different from the autocorrelation of noise. Uh, sometimes it's, it's not, it's a little bit difficult. So we can see here that this is, this tends to be like this. It's not quite, but it ten, tends to be like this. And this was generated with a HACREF and a GNU radio signal uh, using this, uh, this flow graph. Uh, I just wanted to, to generate a wide signal, kind of wide signal, wider than the, the previous one. And this one was taken from the digital TV uh, channel. And at 470 megahertz, was taken from the air. As you can see, these is, this are similar. So it's difficult to, to extract some feature to distinguish between this and this. And uh, in this case, we, also, we have a, a signal that we generated with the HACREF and the GNU radio. And it's also a white signal. You can see that these are very similar. So it's difficult to distinguish between these two. That's why I, I, I had to think of other method or to do something about this. So what I did was, was just take the FFT of the autocorrelation, which is the PSD, the power spectrum density. And uh, now we can see that the features show up. We can 
now distinguish between the, the presence of signal and the noise. So here is, this is noise, and this is the 400 centi megahertz signal, and this is the HACAREF uh, plus GNU radio signal generated uh, uh, through, with the computer and uh, transmitted to the, to, to the air. And we can see that there is a, a, a evident difference between these uh, uh, graphs. So it's easy to, now it's easier than before to, do, to tell the difference between the, the two cases, the presence of signal or just noise. So, but uh, I needed to convert these to numbers. Yes, so, because the, the algorithm only receives numbers. I can now give the, all these, uh, uh, like one, more than 1,000 uh, dots or points to the, to the algorithm. Will be very, very heavy work for the algorithm. So what I did was I, I, I took the percentiles, yes, of the uh, signal, the percentiles, and uh, so this is the, this, uh, these are the percentiles for the signal, yes, and these are the percentiles for the noise, yes. So, so now, now the percentiles are more features, the features that are gonna uh, uh, give the, the machine learning algorithm to, to learn, yes. And uh, here, this is, uh, this PU means primary user, and the one means there is primary user, or, and PU, primary user, zero means there is no primary user. And this, these are just uh, some of the data that I use for, for, for training the, the system. And uh, at the end, this, what, this were the results that I got. And uh, with the Euclidean uh, method for narrow signals, it was very good. Yeah, uh, uh, there, was no, there, there was no problem with narrow signals with any of the methods. The problem was with the white signals. Yes, in this case, uh, for white, the white signals are more difficult to detect. So for the clear distance, the performance was just 80%. For the k-means, was uh, the probability of the, uh, the, the percentage of detection was 95% with the false alarm percentage was 2.3% for the KNN 1.6, and for the uh, detection percentage was 96.2%. Uh, uh, some conclusions and future work. So uh, as a conclusion, I can say that the KNN method performs better than the Euclidean and K-means method. The more training data, the better the performance as you uh, listen this morning in the presentation. Uh, we can see the autocorrelation and the uh, power spectral de density as images and analyze them by means of machine learning algorithms. And pre-trained models can be shared to be reused for spectrum sensing. So somebody else can uh, obtain the model, yes, and can uh, uh, save it in a file, yes, and someone else can use the model. To, to do spectrum sensing. And I still have some problems with the uh, overflowing. I am getting those O's. But even though I, am get, I, am, uh, uh, I have this problem, I was able to get good results. Um, I had to work on this to, how to solve this uh, overflowing problem. And also, uh, future work includes to, to do multi-label classification. So, trying to use these methods to multi-label. Not just saying there's signal, no signal, but trying to you know, differentiate between different types of signals. And uh, also future work, future work includes to ca calibrate the hyperparameters of the model for better performance, trying other percentiles or looking for other features. Like hyperparameters I like the parameters that are um, particular to each uh, machine learning method. So it's, uh, they belong to a machine learning method, not to the samples, but they belong just to a, a machine learning method. And uh, look for other features. Maybe there are other features that can uh, deliver better results. Um, and that's it for today. Thank you. you have any questions?
We have some time for questions. And could the next speaker please come to the back here, please? Uh, yes, um, on the presentation here, you talk about signals and noise. I think at the end you touched on it, but you don't, uh, the signal that you're looking for or distinguishing from noise could be anything. You don't know a priori what the signal is, or do you have to define the signal and just detect whether it's there or not? Uh, so your question is? Uh, you, you're distinguishing whether there's a signal yes, or this presence is a, of signal. Do you have to know what the signal is ahead of time, or is it just any information bearing signal or radar signal or anything? Yes, any signal. The purpose is to determine if the channel is occupied by some By any uh, signal. By yes. some transmit. So you, because uh, what I want to do with this system is to characterize the user, the the user's patterns of, of channels. So the, the spectrum sensing can be optimized because it's not used all the time. Sometimes it's allocated to some operator or to some pers person, mm -hmm. but it, uh, they don't use it all the time. So with the method, we want to uh, uh, determine the, the occupancy level of the, of the, of the channels. Yes. Okay. Uh, in the first algorithm, the Euclidean distance algorithm, you had, uh, you, when you were calculating the Euclidean distance, it was normalized kind of initially because the, the, the slope one line, but then in the subsequent block, you, you renormalized the measured distances, and I was, I was curious about the, the impetus, the, the why behind the normalization a, a second time. Uh, uh, I normalized just one, one time, it's, it's, uh, it's for, because the distance can be any number, so uh, to make easier the decision, the normalization is for, for uh, mm, uh, co converting the distance in a, to a range between zero and one. So because otherwise you will get any number, so it will be difficult to make the decisions. So the normalization is just once, and so the distance can be between zero and one, and it's easier. So, Thank you. Any other additional yes, questions? Um, are you able to do, I noticed that you send everything to a file. Is there any plans to make this more real time or is it just simply for post analysis? Uh, you say if the, the file is for, is it real time or say? So like, um, the, the GRC blocks, right? Like it just goes and it saves the analysis that it performs to a file. Is there any plans for kind of a block that can do the analysis in real time or close to real time that you can then send on? Yes, like uh, you have the file and you can like analyze in real time. Yes. Mm -hmm. So right now you are storing it. Yes, and the, in the previous in the next stage uh, we'll work on how to do some real-time analysis, so we can make, so we can make changes in the channels, in the, how we can use the channels. Yes. Okay. 